In our last lesson, we started a discussion on agricultural extension methods. We established that there are three primary agricultural extension methods, which are the mass media method, the individual method, and the group method. We spoke about the mass media method and discussed some of the advantages and disadvantages. Today, we'll be exploring the other methods that are used in agricultural extension. The individual method of agricultural extension involves direct contact between the individual farmers and the extension workers. This enables the extension worker to give attention to each farmer. One advantage of this method is that, unlike the mass media method, you can take feedbacks. You are also sure of effective communication. However, this method is both time consuming and tedious. It is expensive and does not give room for reaching a larger audience. The number of workers needed to carry these out effectively may not readily be available. The last method of agricultural extension is the group method. If you followed Mukhtar's story in the previous lesson, then you know that he employed this method while in his community. The group method involves engaging the farmers in groups through group discussions, method demonstrations, farm works and excursions, field trips, debates, general meetings, and more. This is a fine balance between the individual method and the mass media method because you can reach a decent number of people at a time. It also saves time, less tedious, and is contagious because the positive adoption by one farmer can influence others towards adopting the method. The disadvantage of this method, however, is that a negative attitude from one farmer can easily affect others. Remember we mentioned that it is contagious. Farmers may also not be regular at meetings. With each of these methods, you must refer back to the objectives and principles of agricultural extension to decide which is appropriate at a particular point in time. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next class.